And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a returning good brother to the temple. He is one half of two of two little mice, or technically one third, I should go. I should say. Yes, yes, <laughs> that's correct. Um, Some things have changed since last year. <laughs> yeah. um, cr creator of bro Creator of Broken Compass. Now, 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 be now back and big and bigger than ever with with the Adventure is Back initiative, which is not, which at the time of this recording has has managed to get has managed to. Go from go from a goal of ten thousand euro to one hundred forty point eight thousand. So congratulations on that! Wow, <laughs> that's a lot to take in. Thank you, thank you, and hi everyone. The one and only Simone Formicola. Yes, yes, yes. That's correct. <laughs> how are you how are you doing today, man? Ah, fine, fine. I guess uh, we are obviously working. <laughs> 24 hours a day, uh, looking after the Kickstarter. This is our, our first Kickstarter, which is at the, the same time uh, meant for Italian and from uh, international fun alike. So uh, we are always, <laughs> some of us are always watching the page, uh, answering to comments on Kickstarter, on Facebook. We're doing live in, in many languages. <laughs> so it, it's pretty crazy, but it, it's doing better. It, Really, really, really great. So we are uh, pretty happy about it, you know, <laughs> and excited. Uh, last week is coming, so here we are. Which that's an that's an interesting thing to to uh, go with, because you a lot of time now. Obviously, you're not the first nor the last um, dev, dev from it dev from Italy that I've had that I've had on the show, and a lot of times. When I bring that, when I bring them on for 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 a given Kickstarter, the thing is are the thing is already done. It's just done in Italian, and now it's be, and now it's in the middle of getting translated to English. But in this case, um, you guys are you guys are pulling double duty linguistically. Did, um, how much of an adjustment period was that? Well, uh, it, it's an entire different uh, thing to do. I mean, this is our third. Uh, Broken Compass Kickstarter. We we did the uh, first one uh, only for Italian audiences mm -hmm. exactly one year ago. Um, then we made uh, a second one just for, as you said, just for translating the existent material and the books uh, for the international audience. Uh, but now we are trying to merge the, the, the two communities uh, which both of the Kickstarter uh, created, which was created around our game, around, around our project, and to merge them in one uh, unique international community, and that 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 is quite the, I don't know, it, it's 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 really fun, it, it's really tiring, it's a lot of stuff to do, but we are trying to bring for the first time. Uh, our I don't know <laughs> our presence within the community, even in the international uh, for the international fan, uh, we are doing live stream in English. Me and Rico and Daniela, which mm -hmm. we are the three, the three of us are the two little mice, <laughs> the two other and the, the artist behind Broken Compass. Uh, we're doing live chats and live stream of play uh, in English, uh, <laughs> even if. Our, our our English is what it is. I mean, we, we try with all ourselves to do the, the best uh, for the community. and But we, we are receiving a lot of love. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. So we are uh, pretty happy about it. As, as we speak, uh, as we are recording the interview, there are a group of, of people, of player friends, who are doing a live stream of Broken Compass in French during the Kickstarter uh, mm -hmm. on, on our YouTube channel uh, just to show their French friend what is Broken Compass. Maybe some of their friends are not uh, 
so okay with English, are having difficulties to uh, follow our English live and English uh, play. So, so they are playing actually in French just to uh, to show the game to 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 uh, to others. It, it, it's it, it's pretty amazing. I would say so. Yeah. Yes, it's an entirely different things to do. Uh, we, we are, for the first time, uh, we are trying to communicate mainly in English and to bring uh, most of the community with us uh, to to learn together how to communicate with with different people from all around the world. And I, I think it it's becoming a, a huge thing. Uh, a really, really, really nice thing, this international community. Now, with uh, with some of the, now, when it came to when it came to Adventure is back, was it was it originally just was the original plan just to do a a um, second go, a second go at Broken Compass for those who missed the first campaign? Uh, uh, Broken Compass Adventure is back. Is in the meantime, uh, obviously, I mean to uh, reach out more people. Mm -hmm. But at the mean, uh, in the same time, the same Kickstarter, we are also uh, producing new stuff, new material, new books for both in both Italian and English languages. Of course, uh, we we are two more seasons in coming uh, seasons are like the the, the, the the standard supplements of Broken Compass. The first one was Golden Age, mm -hmm. uh, settings and a campaign and a list of new rules to enter in the, in the 30s to play Indiana Jones-like adventure and the rules to bring the supernatural inside uh, Broken Compass. And now we are uh, in the making of uh, two new seasons, two and three, uh, which are uh, Jolly Roger and Voyage Extraordinaire, mm -hmm. uh, which is the first uh, a setting in the last moments, last few, last years of the Golden Age of Piracy. So we are in the 18th century, in the first half of the 18th century with pirates and the kind of beings and blackbird of this world um, there is a setting of course there will be a, a new season so a new campaign playable campaign ready to play uh, and new rules which feature the way um, it, to how to i don't know uh, use sail a boat together how to make action in broken compass as a group and not as a single one that is the main mechanic in Jolly Roger. We use it to sail a ship, but uh, an adventurer mm -hmm. could, a group could use it to do anything they like, of course. Uh, rules for dueling, one versus one, and so on. Mm -hmm. And Voyage Extraordinaire is maybe the strangest of our season because it is, it's inspired by the works of Jules Verne. The real father of the adventure and the sci-fi uh, novels, yeah. uh, set in the latest 19th century, and it features a lot of new rules, a setting as the the other season, a new season are ready to play, and the rules to add some really really strange things, extraordinary and strange things like yeah. dinosaurs, I don't know monsters, <laughs> strange monsters, strange. Uh, travels, strange things, uh, a little bit of uh, Vernian sci retro sci-fi things, mm -hmm. and so on. Uh, so there's a lot of things in this Kickstarter. And obviously, there is a, a another module, a spin-off, as we call it. Mm -hmm. uh, last time we had uh, Lactates, which were, was written not by us, but by friends and other authors from Italy. And this time we changed uh, the spin-off. We we are uh, <laughs> we are creating this new spin-off, which is "What If." What if? Mm -hmm. What if is a book uh, designed right, which will be uh, written by us to uh, I don't know to explore 
the fortune system, the system behind Broken Compass, which we devised to uh, show the people how we created it and how a player and a group could change some things to adapt the system to their unique uh, way of play. Mm -hmm. And during the campaign, we are unlocking a lot of what ifs, uh, which are the small settings, which will be made by, I don't know, 10, 12, 14 pages mm -hmm. uh, maximum, uh, with strange settings uh, and new rules, which show the people how we uh, use some imagination to bend our own rules to create something new without changing the core of Broken Compass, which is adventure, of course. Mm -hmm. We are pretty crazy things in the what if, uh, just to, 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 uh, to, to show a couple, we have a what if um, named Gods and Man. Mm -hmm. In Greek mythology, I don't know, classic mythology, yeah. uh, where you can play an adventurer, which is also a demigod on a, or a classic hero with supernatural powers. Mm -hmm. And his adventure, his treasure is something to, I don't know, fight the ancient gods of prove himself worthy, uh, like uh, Hercules or uh, Jasone, I don't know. Jason, <laughs> I don't know mm -hmm. <laughs> how is it called in English, um, uh, or even uh, strange and the craziest things like good boys when you kill take the role of the of, of a pet adventurer, mm -hmm. a cat or a dog, uh, and re relieve uh, and play the 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 classical I don't know uh, family movie with uh, the dogs who try to save the city uh, finding someone saving someone and mm -hmm. so on so there are a lot of uh, ideas uh, involved in the fortune system obviously yeah. now you mentioned now uh, with one of them you mentioned you mentioned dueling and yes now I do I do feel I do feel remiss if I didn't give a bit of background when it comes to how I see du my experience with dueling mechanics. Um, I'm a bit I I'm a big L five R guy, Legend of the Five Rings. Okay. And of course, of course, given that that one is trying is trying to go with a very um, a very samurai theater um, type of fantasy. Um, of course, du of course, the yeah, Jutsu duels were go are going to be a uh, are going to be a central thing. Now, obviously, obviously, we're not going. Obviously, we're not going with that. But when it comes to the mechanics for du for duels, um, I'd like you to go into how that how that's how that's going to work. Is it a case of um, a bit of bidding successes, or do you have something else in mind? Um. As for dueling, we already are playtesting it with, with an Italian audience, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, so sorry for everyone who's hearing maybe the, the translation of the terms I'm using will change when the translator comes and do, and do her job. So sorry if I, I said, uh, I will say words uh, which have not much sense. But dueling is a unique mechanic in Broken Compass uh, because dueling is the, is the only moment uh, in a season, in an episode, when where also the um, the fortune master uh, may uh, throw the dice, not only the adventurer. Uh, basically, in Blogum Compass, uh, the the fortune master ha has not the dice; o mm -hmm. only the adventurer throw dice and try to beat uh, a set amount of. Um, of challenge of tasks set by the fortune master, which is two of a kind, three of a kind, four of a kind, etc. Mm -hmm. In the case of dueling, is a little bit different. Uh, duel is uh, a thing that is possible only uh, one versus one, obviously. For rules, mm -hmm. we are all, always uh, uh, remember that Broken Compass is a, a cinematic uh, game. It it it. Once with Broken Compass, we want you to uh, recreate the feelings of a movie, a high-budget movie. So a duel between a hero and uh, his rival is an important more pivot moment mm -hmm. uh, in, a, in a story. Uh, so how, uh, it works in, in this way. I, I try to make it simple, and I hope I have the, <laughs> the, the ability to... Uh, 
to tell it in an understandable way. So, mm -hmm. um, when you face uh, an enemy in a duel, the enemy has a set amount of dice due to its difficulties. It can mm -hmm. be five, six, seven, eight dice, and so on. Um, and the duel is divided in two, uh, I don't know how, how, how called, Let, let's say turn. It's, it's not correct, the correct turn. Phases. One, phases, let's say two phases. Uh, one, in one phases, the adventurer has the upper end. In the other phases, it's the enemy of the adventurer, so the fortune master who has the upper end. Mm -hmm. When the adventurer has the upper end, he uh, tells, he narrates he, uh, what, what his action is, and he decided what um, skill to test, to put to a test. Mm -hmm. It's entirely up to adventurer. And I see, I, try, I engage him in a sword fight because I'm a really good fighter and I throw fight. Or I grab him and I uh, try to uh, toss him uh, in, in the sea. And so I, I will uh, throw tough because I am a, a big guy. Mm -hmm. Or I am a, uh, another type of adventurer, so I cut a rope uh, try to make something fall on the head of my enemy. So I will, uh, uh, I don't know, throw tech, mm -hmm. for example, or observation or alert. Uh, and I can really uh, tell what I want and throw the ability that I prefer. In the second, after we do that, we both uh, throw the dice and which one of us has the highest level of success mm -hmm. uh, may damage the other. So if I choose my skill, but I throw uh, uh, less than the Fortune Master, mm -hmm. it's the Fortune Master that uh, score a point against me. So he threatened me and make me lose some luck point. Because I, in a way, I, he, uh, ha, he was a swordsman even better than I was. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Oh, God. Uh, in the second phase, the same things is in the hand of the fortune master. So the fortune master uh, tells the player what the enemy is doing. And the fortune master asks a player for a skill to put to a test. Mm -hmm. Ah, So you are very uh, fast and able with a sword. Okay. And I... The, your enemy sh shoots at you, so you have to throw a stunt. I'm sorry. <laughs> he doesn't want to uh, engage in a sword fight. Uh, it is what it is. Um, and the things go on until one of the two, obviously, uh, mm -hmm. surrender or uh, gets knocked out. Mm -hmm. uh, or when the, the duel um, gets, I don't know, uh, when others arrive. And they change the duel in a normal combat, in a normal brawl, or what it is, or shoot out if they have guns, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a mechanic, it's pretty simple, like everything, obviously, in Broken Compass, but it's the, um, the only time when the, old, the Fortune Master itself throws the dice, he can re roll the dice like uh, an adventurer. Uh, and so we, we saw it could get things really, really interesting, and it's a dynamic, a perfect dynamic to end uh, a session. Mm -hmm. uh, in the Pirates, they, they, they often end up in a duel, I don't know, during a, a fight between two ships, one gets damaged, and one of the adventurer happens to uh, find himself alone. Uh, while the others are, I don't know, uh, try to put out some fire or fight off an horde of pirates. And that's the moment when, as a fortune master, you send in, ah, the evil captain, the enemy captain, or the, the marine uh, coming and uh, offer you a duel, throw you a sword, uh, and the soundtrack goes on, I don't know. Uh, it's... Um, it's a little bit different than the rest of the game, but in our idea, it really, really uh, can uh, put in the game that type of uh, suspense, because there are two people throwing dice, uh, both of them may re-roll their dice, so it's a, it's a different kind of, of action mm -hmm. than the rest.
of the standard things, as to say. Yeah. Now, when it now um, when it obviously if you're gonna be if you're gonna be doing a setting that a setting that's gonna involve the, that's gonna involve um, piracy, mm -hmm. um, you gotta have ships. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there's, there's no there's no if there's no ifs ands or buts about it. We have we have to, we have to we have to have ships. Um, in most ta in most tables, rum would be optional. In my table. Slightly less so, <laughs> but when it comes to ship, when it comes to um, when it comes to ship use, I can I can see that as being as, as being just a, as being um, a, just a skip just a skill use. But when it comes to ship combat, that's where I want to pick your brain about. When uh, we are talking about um, naval battle. Yeah. Ship combat, I don't know how to call it. Uh, we devised another uh, mechanic, which is the, the crew action, we call it. Mm -hmm. It's a moment when every single one of the adventurer aboard the ship, in this case, uh, have to do something uh, for the main action to succeed. Uh, Speaking of this mechanic in a simple way, uh, we have uh, a group of people who decide what to do. Mm -hmm. For example, I want to shoot the cannon of the boat and try to damage the other boat, the other ship. Mm -hmm. Pretty simple, straightforward. Uh, the group decides who will have the responsibility of the, uh, the, 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 the main uh, throw, the, the main dice throw, the main task. Uh, and he will act as a last in the group. The other one, the, the other adventurer, uh, may do something to help him. For example, okay, he is, uh, I don't know, the captain as the last uh, action because he has to give the order to, to, mm -hmm. to fight the cannons at the right moment to do the maximum damage. Okay, uh, the other adventurer may help me. Mm -hmm. I don't know. One uh, could say, I, I go up to the, um, to the ship and do, do some, oh, no, I, I go steering the ship uh, to put the ship in the right position to shoot. Okay, you do a, a task, a drive task in this case, mm -hmm. and if you succeed enough, you give an advantage to the last action. And then the other adventurers go, okay, uh, I am, uh, uh, um, I don't know, a sniper, and I try to hit the other ship with my rifle, mm -hmm. to hit the other ship uh, captain, just to make them uh, lose some time while they replace him. Okay, I do a, a shoot task, and if I succeed, I give another advantage. At the end, we have the captain. He has to be, in this case, I don't know, a leadership task, just to give the order the right time to uh, make everyone do what he has to. And he has a fixed um, difficulty for this task, but he could add one dice for every uh, support action who uh, he, his or her uh, comrades are uh, doing. So he threw the dice, and if he succeed, the ship, the ship action, as you can say, as you can call it, uh, succeed. In if he fails, the entire action has a setback. Mm -hmm. This is the core mechanic. Yeah, it will be. Written better than this <laughs> when we be translated. <laughs> I assure everyone. Well, let, well, let's let's be clear. Tran translated and edited because um, I've I've seen what hap I've seen what happens when it, when raw translations are applied without, without <laughs> using uh, proper context. And you and usually whenever I see that, I can I can hear the voices of a thousand editors crying out in terror <laughs> as they were suddenly silenced. Yes. Um, plus, I, plus, I remember the, uh, sto the story that Andy K talked about when it came to translating um, Tenra, where if he, tran if he translated things as they were, um, you would have these huge blocks of text that would get in the way of the art. Yes. So it's a, it's an art translating. It's a complex and very important art. We I've, are. 
I've joking I've jokingly said that translators some translators have to hold double duty as um, as writers. Just probably the, probably the reason I still haven't been able to. I've, a bit of a sh a bit of a shameful confession when it comes when it comes to my my status as a literary nerd. I never finished Roadside Picnic because I couldn't find a good translation, mm. and I'm not learning Russian just to read one book. <laughs> yes, I I understand. It's uh, it's not an easy task because uh, first of all you have to understand what the author are saying why they are saying these things and not another thing and then you have to understand uh, all the i don't know how to call it sorry in english the the, uh, the 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 culture of the writer because something in italian meets a word in italian means something other than its meaning mm -hmm. I, I don't know if it's clear <laughs> in the context so uh, i have to understand their culture and then i have to know how to to translate this concept behind the words in another language, in another culture, who will have another uh, meaning behind other words. So mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's a hard job. Yeah. <laughs> now, one now um, I do want I do want to touch a bit on um, voyages extraordinaires, mm -hmm. and. Obviously, that's obviously that's taking it's that's taking its notes from Jules Verne. But I'm but within that, I'm curious since you mentioned dueling and you mentioned naval battles that are going to be in <laughs> Jolly Roger. Um, yes. Is there anything of is there anything you is there anything stand up that is going that is going to be added to the mechanical sandbox to reflect um, voyages extraordinaires? Yes, we have. Uh... Yes, several things. Um, the the main, the two main things in Voyage Extraordinaire, the two main mechanics we will going to add in Voyage Extraordinaire are the extraordinary creature mm -hmm. you may encounter and the extraordinary in invention. I, I think I don't know. I would be translated. The extraordinary creature are the the creature you may encounter where you go in extraordinary places like dinosaurs in in the center of the earth. Or giant alien moon crab mm. when you go to the moon, like in the Moliere movie, uh, and they act in a, in a very unique way. Mm -hmm. They are not common enemy. They are a, a list of possible danger, and they act ca ca in a they act randomly because you 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 cannot understand how a, a dinosaur <laughs> uh, things. So uh, the the fortune master throw a dice and dinosaur do something, mm -hmm. and you can just try to uh, survive for uh, a fixed number of turns before you you could outrun him or maybe you could change topics and go do something else. Mm -hmm. So they are not enemy; they are this huge, unbeatable creature, uh, which you have to survive somehow and makes random things so it, it, it's it's crazier and it's uh, more difficult to be prepared for them because you don't know what they will do and the other mechanics which we really love is the extraordinary invention mm -hmm. in uh, we are studying yeah, there will be the some object that will uh, have this uh, like i said this retro sci-fi aura so they they are scientific object but you, you don't understand fully how they works uh Jules is full of these objects of these vehicles like nemo submarine obviously but also this kind of electric rifle he nemo has on his submarine uh, other strange vehicle uh, the, the the cannon who can shoot you on the moon uh, this object the scientific uh, fantastical object uh, you can use have um, their own mechanics which is they have a fixed i don't know amounts of use which can grant you advantages or uh, grants you ability of do something uh, unique while you use this object, but they will mm -hmm. break sooner or later because they are prototypes. <laughs> Nobody knows how they works. Mm -hmm. And in the same way, you can also create your own object 
on the go. Uh, like in a, you can grab things. There's a method in a, three turns. You can uh, have an idea, which is a task. You can search for useful materials, which is a second task. And you can assemble your unique object like they do, I don't know, in, in Star Trek when they make things up by combining different things from alien culture and they, oh, I have a teleporting, a personal teleporter. Okay, that's the, that, that's the, the, the kind of stuff I have had players during playtest, uh, which uh, was trending in a jungle, uh, followed by this horde of uh, what, what, uh, five meters tall lizard half lizard, half dinosaurs, and we were blocked on, a, on, on, on this high hill, mm -hmm. uh, surrounded by dinosaurs, and they uh, got to invent the sorts of things that they built a, a hot air balloon by mixing various objects they had. Uh, and the hot air balloon just flew for a little bit and then broke because they had not enough success to completely uh, run out from that situation, but they just uh, get them uh, a little bit far away from the danger. Mm -hmm. uh, that will be the kind of things. There will be also some uh, optional rules, the differences in the very core mechanics of Broken Compass, which is what you are and what are you doing. In Broken Compass, you are an adventurer who is traveling to find a treasure, which is uh, the main, the core of Broken Compass. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks to Voyage, to Voyage Extraordinaire, you could also be uh, someone who is part of an expedition. So your um, final goal is not a treasure, but maybe is uh, a discovery, to discover something, to prove a theory, right or wrong, or to help someone. You could, could be a rescue mission, which is a pretty common theme in uh, Jules Verne uh, novels. Uh, these are the main differences with the core book. Mm -hmm. Now, even though... <laughs> The, th the thing, the thing that's funny when it comes to do when it comes to doing something based on the work of Jules Verne is, especially these days, I think a lot of people are f are familiar with the idea with the idea of his work, even if they're absent from the from from actually re from actually reading his book yes. his books per se. And that's not that's not that's not a um, that's not a that's not a criticism. I'm not I'm not trying to be old man yells at cloud here. But more that the more that people are more familiar with the myth with the mythology than the actual text, in the same way that everybody know everybody know everybody who knows who Sherlock Holmes is, even if they haven't read um, yes. any of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's works. Um, I was get, I was going to make a joke of every, of everybody in France knowing who Asterix is, but that's a terrible <laughs> example. <laughs> yes. Um, but it, it's what it's one of those things where the, it's just kind of in, integration it integrated itself into the um, into into the into the cultural zeitgeist. Um, so you're gonna so have you have you put have you put in sections in the book rega regarding regarding Jules regarding Jules Verne's work and how and how to run a campaign that's that's lar that's largely gonna be taking notes from that for people who are less familiar in the books uh we obviously talk mm -hmm. about the man Jules Verne, mm -hmm. which is the, the father as i said before the father of the adventure novel and the sci-fi novel mm -hmm. so it's a great guy for us we owe him a lot mm -hmm. um in the books there will be uh, the actual um example there will be object taken right from his novel there will be vehicles taken right from his novel. There will be example hook adventure taken right from its novel. So we'll be full of elements taken uh, right from Jules Verne novels. Mm -hmm. uh, th this, this will be uh, very central for us. It's important that you can find uh, the Pouvant, the, the, I don't know, how is it in English? Uh, one of these craziest machine he devised, or the albatross, or the 
and any any of the the, the other things. Um, so a part will be about obviously the mood. What is uh, what what is the meaning of have a, a Jules Vernian season? Mm -hmm. And so the, the the things we said before about expedition. What is an expedition? Why are you, you know, what what is to uh, risk your life for the progress for science, not mm -hmm. for treasure, to prove that this theory is correct or to prove that this theory is incorrect, mm -hmm. and the both of these things will be a core uh, focus in the manual. All right. Now, I w I'd, since, since there's been a lot of headway with it within them, I do want to go a bit, go a bit into, the, into, some, into some of the, um, the what-ifs that, that you have planned. Okay. Um, so uh, with, with a lot of now, as I understand it, a lot of, a lot of these are what are the, are the kind of things that would that if, it, if this was if these were done on their own and earlier in the year probably would be submitted for zine quest <laughs> um, in, ter in terms of their size I'm guessing I'm guessing none of them are above tw none of the individual what ifs are above 25 pages no no no, no. they are uh, little settings and hacks mm -hmm. with uh, additional rules uh, each what if has a uh, one main new mechanic mm -hmm. and six new tags so new yeah. option for the character creation that's the core uh there will be about i don't know 12 14 pages each all right so give, given that I'd, I'd like to do a bit of a i'd like to do a bit of a lightning round just going just going over it and what and what mechanics are get what mechanics are getting okay um, at it. so I'll um, I'll start I'll start at the top and work my way down, starting with um, Cosmic Horror. Cosmic Horror is ba setting based obviously on uh, Lovecraft and Cosmic Horror gener in general, mm -hmm. and they feature new rules to uh, manage the madness and the horror. Uh, so the, the adventurer sees something so dreadful that it will uh, deplete it. it their max amount of luck, mm -hmm. so they will be, uh, they could get mad at the center point. It will be a very uh, much uh, difficult setting than the base, than the, the base squad, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the the main, the core mechanics. Yeah. Um, space opera. Space opera is uh, the genre, so obviously uh, it will. Um, have a mechanic to uh, add something we call ESP, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the, this kind of mind powers, which will have their own unique mechanic, their own unique feeling needed to use them. So one can be can uh, have an adventurer which is also uh, a star knight, yeah, as we call it. In order, in order to be legally distinct, the best kind it's of exactly, 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 <laughs> with a star sword and mm -hmm. star knight. Yeah, um, gods and men, which you already you already hinted at earlier when you when you talked yes. about it. Um, <laughs> talked about the synopsis, but what? But mechanically, what would gods and men add to the sandbox? The gods and men will have the rules to uh, play as a uh, half semi divine adventurer. Mm -hmm. So a heroic adventure, which is way, way stronger, obviously, than a common one. But he has his rules. He has exceptional powers, supernatural powers. He has mo mo more dice, <laughs> actually, mm -hmm. than a normal adventurer. But he will have to fight against the fate, as in the classic, uh, the, the, the classic uh, mythology, teach us. And the hero is uh, has a destiny. He has to fulfill in that his destiny, and then he has to succumb to death. It is his duty to mm -hmm. preserve the, the 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 equilibrium of the adult. So it will have this kind of new mechanic. All right, um, urban legends. <laughs> One of my favorite urban legend. Uh, it, it's kind of a Men in Black like settings, 
when you will uh, run an agency. So there will be rules to run an agency mm -hmm. uh, made uh, of, of guys who have to uh, face supernatural threats, which can be aliens or mythological threats or, I don't know, superhuman threats, mm -hmm. what you would like. And he will have the rule to, to run, to create and run this agency, of course, and the rules to play uh, several non-human uh, adventurer. You could play as a, a vampire, mm -hmm. or a werewolf, or an alien, or a mutant, uh, or any of these things. Yeah. Um, high school. High school. We wrote, we are, we will write high school together with a bunch of friends who are very active here in Italy with a group uh, who's called. Um, R role playing parents, if mm -hmm. I could translate them, Genitori di Ruolo in Italian, which is a group very active in bringing the role play inside schools uh, all, all around uh, northern Italy. And so here you will play as a high school guy or a high school girl, um, and you will have a unique um, mechanic to handle what we will call, I don't know, like school danger and school mm -hmm. enemies. Uh, there will be these, these fun mechanics when not only the things that threaten your life are danger, like in a basic broken compass, but also the things who threaten your, uh, I don't know how to call it, uh, your, your self-acceptance. Uh, if someone uh, yell at you, you may lose luck. In high school, because that, that's a problem for you. If you lose uh, your your social status, if your social status is threatening, if your position, mm -hmm. if the uh, the way your friends of your family uh, treats you, uh, it's a danger. Everything is a danger for a, a young boy or a young girl. So it, right. it will have this new mechanic. Now. Next would be Good Boys, which you your your <laughs> you already mentioned its synopsis earlier. Yes, in Good Boys, uh, obviously that the main the core of Good Boys is to play in the role of a four-footed adventurer. It could be a cat, a dog, a pig, but also a fish. And every rule you need to adapt the system mm -hmm. uh, to play an adventure looking for a treasure, as in normal Broken Compass, but with dogs, cats, or horses, I don't know. And the rules, if you want to uh, play together uh, human and animal adventurer, if you mm -hmm. would like to do, I don't know, a Doolittle-like adventure, like in the last movie with Donnie Jr. I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't going to go with, um, I wasn't going to go with Doolittle in this case. I was going to, I was going to go with something a little, well, more flat, more classic, and more and more of our, and more of our age. Um, some some. Oh. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I keep th I keep thinking of I keep thinking of um. Of uh, the uh, the rescuers as as the yes, as, no, as obviously the, the rescuers. Yes, it's ch cheaper chop in Italian. I think. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I don't know how they are called in English, but yes, also mm -hmm. that that type of things. Mm -hmm. Of course, we are. Uh, planning on adding like 12 new tags, uh, which is horse, cat, dog, you know. Uh, there is the, oh, how is it called? The uh, <laughs> small animal <laughs> of the rescuer. Uh, yeah. Well, this one. Mm -hmm. the, every, every type of animal in mm -hmm. a family uh, movie uh, involving animals who save the day will be included in this. What if? Yep. Now, next is um, Last on Earth. Last on Earth, which is a post-apocalyptic settings uh, with new tags and new rules to handle uh, something we we are calling for now a danger uh, clock. We have the Doomsday Clock in mm -hmm. standard Broken Compass, which is uh, a, a clock that tells us in the seasons how much your rivals is near the treasure 
or how much your rival is threatening to uh, find the treasure before you. Mm. In this case, uh, you are obviously in an uh, unhospitable setting, so in a setting very dangerous, when any time you fail, you uh, will bring a menace closer to you. Mm -hmm. You can choose your menace, maybe, uh, I don't know, zombies or mutants or raging barbarians or motorcycle, uh, what you prefer, of course. But in, with this clock, you may uh, add dangers and enemies endlessly uh, to an episode each time a set amount of failure happens uh, at the table. Mm -hmm. Now, when, now on. Um... Now, one of the more recent ones that I, I believe I believe was on I believe was unlocked just a few days ago was Fantasy Quest. Yes, we are just unlocked it like yesterday, maybe mm -hmm. no, maybe today this morning or yesterday for you in US, obviously. Yeah, uh, for us for us is uh, like twelve years, twelve hours ago. Space uh, so is warped and time is bendable. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely, it is. Fantasy Quest is a uh, fantasy. What if, of mm -hmm. course, with the rules to play uh, fantasy folks like dwarf, dwarves, elves, and so on, and the rules to use to cast spells and use magic in the Broken Compass Fortune System. Mm -hmm. Now, when now, um, when it comes to when it comes to when it comes to utilizing um, magic. Is mm -hmm. is that going to be its own set of mechanics, or do, or do, is your plan to um, to sim to simply to simply have that as an extension of the of the mechanics that are already present? Uh, they are um, every one of these mechanics are an extension of some mechanics already present, because mm -hmm. the the meaning of what is is showing the people how you can uh, slightly bend the system to add something that we do not think about adding, like magic, in this case. So it will be, uh, I, I, I could tell you now what we are thinking, but we are, <laughs> we need already to finish the, the writing and the checking, so it, it could uh, uh, change a lot <laughs> from now to the moment it will be published. Uh, but when you uh, use magic, you, um, you will uh, describe anything you want to do in a reasonable do, and the uh, fortune master will ask you to make a task, a specific task of some type, like in a normal action in Broken Compass, but uh, in case of failure, it will have some serious consequences. Mm -hmm. it, this I can tell you for now. Yeah. I could be more precise in a month or two oh. <laughs> when, when it will be finished. Yeah, uh, the one of the big reasons that that one in, that one in particular is cur is curious to me is because I've been in many de I've been in many debates about the about the um, about the about the attempt to the attempt of some to do one size fits all approach when it comes to when it comes when it comes to fantasy. Mm -hmm. um, and the way ma and with a, much like with a lot of world building, it's a series of questions. And I get the I get the feeling that with th with this particular approach, it is go it is going on some of those familiar gr some some of those familiar grounds, but it's not trying to it's not trying to re it's not trying to reinvent the sandbox to ac to accommodate fa to accommodate the fantastical. No, no uh, Broken Compass has the this focus, as as we, uh, we we were saying before, he has this uh, clear focus, which is the same in every setting, in every what if, even mm -hmm. you are an you are an adventurer who is trying to find a treasure before a rival. That is mm -hmm. the core of Broken Compass. At, in Fantasy Quest, you will be a fantasy adventurer who will be seeking a fantasy treasure before a fantasy ride. Maybe the rival will be uh, a dark lord of some sort, an evil wizard, I don't know. But the meaning is the same. You, uh, Broken Compass, it's not uh, a game device to be uh, a huge sandbox when you can go wherever you want and do wherever you want. Mm -hmm. uh, because he has a focus. 
you, uh, as we say, you uh, as an adventurer, has three main quality. Uh, you are ready to risk your life for the treasure. Mm -hmm. You want the treasure more than you care about your life because it's, it's important to you for whatever reason. Maybe you want to save the world with it, or maybe you want to become rich, or maybe you just want to uh, go on with the study of your father. I don't know, but it's uh, uh, critical things for you to do, and you're ready to risk everything to do it. And the last thing that makes you an adventurer, Broken Compass, you are a hero. Hero in the uh, in the cinema cinematographic uh, means of this term. So you always you always know that you have the chance of doing this. Mm -hmm. You have what it takes to bring your quest to the end. Yeah. Uh, these three uh, pillars will not go. Uh, away in mm -hmm. any of the settings, main or what if there is. Yeah. Uh, as I tell anyone, I, I, I also do not believe in a system fits it all. Uh, and it's it's right. It, it's not a system where you uh, just uh, create your group and roaming through a kingdom doing a bunch of adventures, which is, I, I, I like <laughs> these things, but Broken Compass, in this case, it's not the right game. If you want a uh, a movie-like experience, so in a fixed amount of session, a fixed amount of time, with a very clear task in mind from the very beginning, Broken Compass could be useful if mm -hmm. it's your style. So that's the, 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 the main thing. All right, I got I can get you on that. Now, when it came to now, when it comes to the uh, when it comes to the ta the tag cards. That are, mm -hmm. that are that are being added as a um, add-on. Um, is was that was that so, was whenever whenever I see the whenever I see these sort of um, these sort of card things, I'm I'm always curious if that's something that was already kind of being done at your at your table using index cards or some equivalent, just not as pretty. <laughs> uh, but in. In a way, yes. Uh, way <laughs> many, many years ago, uh, way before Broken Compass uh, was uh, ready enough to be uh, published, to be printed, to be presented to public, mm -hmm. and we used to play it. We like to use it as a game you could play anywhere. Uh, when you are going, I don't know, you are on a plane mm -hmm. doing some international flights like three four hours and you don't need anything you just uh, the idea of the card i want to do to make an adventure i i i don't even need the the, the books i just pick three two random cards and i have my adventure mm -hmm. i have my sheet i don't need my sheet i don't need anything that is something we really, really do like. Uh, maybe because we are also growing old, and the time for playing is uh, any day is lesser than the day before. So we we like the possibility that Broken Compass can give you to be ready to play in really a matter of minutes. And the cards are a huge help in this case. I also they have everything mm -hmm. you, you need. They are the name of the tag. The skill point, also your, um, I always call your strong point, your uh, expertise, the name and the explanation of your expertise. So you have everything you need to uh, to play. Yeah, and I could e I could easily see that I could easily see that tag setup being used um, at um, at pick at pick up and play convention style approaches. I mean, obviously nobody's do, no. Obviously, less people are doing conventions right now, but that's not going. Uh, that's <laughs> not going to last. No, hopefully not. I hope the convention will be back someday, maybe next year, with a little bit of mm -hmm. of time to to regain our our status. Uh, I, I I really do hope that next year convention could start to go back to the way they was before the pandemic mm -hmm. now 
once, as I said before, I do want to give my congratulations for how well you guys have just cr just um, crushed the the initial goal, the initial goal. Um, what would you be sh when it comes to the, when it comes to the material that's that's being expanded on with um, Adventure is Back? What what do you foresee as the re as the um, release window for its digital versions? Ah, uh, the digital version of the new material, I think. Uh, it's harder to be precise it's because uh, it's a, a lot of passage we write in Italian that it has to be translated and then mm -hmm. to be uh, handed to the graphic I think between o October maybe uh, the, the, the digital material could be handed out to the international bakers I'm pretty confident mm -hmm. um. And I'll I'll will certainly be keeping an eye out for for its for its particular releases. And in the interest of full disclosure, I you can count my name under the under the um, thirteen hundred and change back backers that have, that have shown up so far. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> and I will I'll most certainly be look, be looking forward to seeing to seeing how how this um how this how this develops because. I'd, I'd, imag I'd imagine that so I'd imagine that the what if is go is going to be is going to take a significant amount of time because you, because even th even though most of them aren't going to be more than twenty five pages, you're still doing half you're still doing half a dozen of them. Yes, oh. <laughs> you're doing a lot of them. And there and of course, there's also the fact that that unless I'm mistaken, you're planning on um. On collecting the what? On collecting the what ifs into a into a physical book. That is the we are hoping. Obviously, there is a stretch goal. We will unlock uh, in a ten thousand euros, mm -hmm. nine thousand euros uh, from here. So, with eight days remaining, we are positive about making what if a physical book. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I I I will be keeping I'll be keeping a close eye regardless, because because well, ev everybody everybody wants everybody wants adventure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> even, even if it even if it was just even if it was just bug catching in the in the in the uh, wilderness outside outside the outside the place or hmm. or the weird or the weird things within within a get within a given town. Um, I mean, that, after all, you if you look at if you look at the setting of a place like Twin Peaks, it seemed like it seemed like there wouldn't be any sort of adventure that had happened that happened in a place like that. But obviously, but. that's not the case. <laughs> yes. Oh. Um, but with all with all that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule and braving the hell of time zones to come back up to the temple. <laughs> thank you. And, Anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. And of, and of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then... On behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody. <laughs>